So in this section, what I want to talk a little bit about is some applications of electrochemical cells. But I've been rewriting my notes, and I noticed that I, there's some stuff that I left out that I need to mention. So I'm going to go ahead and do it on this first slide, some terminology. So here's a typical electrochemical cell. It has an anode half cell and a cathode half cell. Now this particular one is for a lead acid battery, and that's what we'll be talking about batteries in this first section. But the terminology I missed uh, comes all out of this one slide. So when we were writing these uh, cells out before, one of the things I mentioned is that the cathode, we have an anode on this side and a cathode on this side, is that the cathode is always more positive than the anode. Um, and because of that, one of the things I didn't mention is electrons are flowing in this direction because the cathode has the more positive charge. So I have a spontaneous chemical reaction over here that's pulling electrons out of the cathode, and those electrons are then supplied by the anode. Remember, the anode is where oxidation is taking place, and so when we're oxidizing, we're moving el electrons from whatever is in the solution or from whatever the electrode material happens to be. And then we're pumping electrons back in on the cathode because the cathode is the reduction side. So we have this going on. And we have a negative charge flowing to the right. So this is my electron movement. And the result is there's stuff that happens in the salt bridge that, that I didn't mention, and, or I might have mentioned, but I think I forgot to mention, uh, is that charges need to move in the salt bridge in order to compensate for the charge flow of the electrons through the wire. right? So in this salt bridge, we can have positive charges moving to the right. So let's say sodium nitrate was my electrolyte in my salt bridge. Then sodium ions could move to the right. That's one way to compensate for the buildup of negative charge over here. But the other way for that to happen is that I could have nitrate ions moving to the left, like that. So there's actually a couple of ways these ions operate to compensate for charge that's flowing through this electrochemical cell. Now, the other thing that I said and we did was we, sh we showed that the cathode potential was positive from the anode for many of the reactions that we were doing. In that case, that implies that that's a spontaneous reaction. So we were writing electrochemical cells for spontaneous electrochemical reactions. Those types of cells are known as either voltaic cells or galvanic cells. So they're called voltaic cells because of Volta. And Volta was making batteries and doing uh, experiments with uh, making batteries. And Galvani is famous because he was also doing similar things. Um, but he was using it to shock frog leg muscles and show how frog leg muscles twitched. Uh, when you applied a, an electrical potential to them. So he's kind of like like one of the first like neuroscientists, right? It's all middle 1700 stuff. Uh, Volta is kind of interesting because a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is attributed to Faraday, but Faraday actually met Volta, uh, I believe in Italy, uh, with his supervisor a guy by the name of Davy, and Volta actually gave them their first battery. I used to show pictures of the battery. It's actually called a pile. In French, a battery is called a pile. But when you look at the battery that uh, Volta gave to Faraday, uh, it's actually a pile of metal like discs with paper or burlap in between each one. And then it's soaked in a, an acid like acetic acid or sulfuric acid, and it literally looks like a pile of metal discs with plates in between. So I'm pretty sure that's where the pile term came uh, to be for the French in French for a battery, because it does literally look like a voltaic pile, like a vol Volta's pile. Anyways, that's really neither here nor there, but this is uh, the terminology I forgot to tell you. These are called, for spontaneous reactions, they're called voltaic or galvanic cells. Uh, and the, in those electrochemical cells, the anode it, or the cathode is positive 
in terms of voltage relative to the anode and the electrodes electrons go from the anode to the cathode and then in the salt bridge uh, we have ions moving left and right negative ions moving to the left and positive ions moving to the right to compensate for that charge